As we have for the last several months, we are bringing you inside the Addison Early Childhood Collaborative. Once again, I'm with Mary Haley, and we thought this time we would bring you to one of the events that Mary's been telling us about. Mary, there is a lot of stuff going on in the background, and I know this has, has just begun for the evening. Tell us about what's going on here at Indian Trail. What we've got going on tonight is about 32 different partner organizations, social services, a variety of different preschool programs, some universities are all here talking to parents about the services that they provide. And then we have a presentation tonight about internet safety and social media. So we've got a couple of different things going on tonight. Mm -hmm. How often do you hold events like this within the collaborative? The fall family fair, we hold once a year, literally, and we do it at fall time all the time. We've been doing this for about six years now, and it's always been something that draws a lot of people. It's real informative. A lot of people learn about all the different community organizations that are here in Addison. Is that the purpose of this, just to get the word out about the agencies? Or as you mentioned, there's a presentation going on tonight. Is it an educational tool in itself? Always twofold. Primarily, we want to get the word out about all of the great organizations in Addison and in DuPage County, actually. And then we always have a presentation that's educational that we know is going to be something that matters a lot to parents. And as you know, internet safety and social media is something that is so tough for people to keep up with all the time. So this is something that we think is really important for parents to hear. And it's, and it's scary. You used to worry about it in high school, and then it was, okay, we should start worrying about it when they're in junior high. But kids are picking up cell phones and tablets younger and younger. Absolutely. There are kids that are in the younger elementary grades that have access to the Internet, and we think it's really important to let parents know what's going on and what parents need to do to be able to protect their kids. Absolutely. So I know we've just gotten started tonight, but how many people typically attend this? We typically have about 100 to 150 people um, between the parents and the children that are here. And we always have uh, the Girl Scouts doing some fun kid activities so the parents can either look around or go to the presentation, but usually around 100 to 150 people. Great. Well, Mary, let's take a look at some of the agencies now. Sounds good. Okay. Mary and I are at the Hamdard Healthcare booth, and I'm with Kelly here to tell us about Hamdard. Kelly, uh, I don't think a lot of people are even aware that Hamdard has a center here in Addison. First, tell us where you're located, and then tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, we're located right on Lake Street at 228 East Lake Street, actually, so right off of 290 right there. Uh, I am a public health educator at Hamdard Center, but Hamdard Center as a whole has primary care, mental health care, also case management and many services that we provide here in our Addison location. We also have a domestic violence shelter here as well. And those that have heard of Hamdard, I think that's what they hear about is the, the domestic violence services. What kind of services do you provide? Is it a shelter or you put people in touch with other services? Yeah, we have a shelter in our Addison location here. If someone wanted to get some more information about Hamdard, how would they go about doing that? Do you have a website or a phone number you could give us? Yes, we have hamdardcenter.org, and we also have our phone number on that website. And we, people are welcome and encouraged to stop in and speak with one of our case managers as well. That's great. Mary, how did Hamdard become part of the collaborative, and, and why are they an important partner for you? Well, they became a partner of the collaborative several years ago, and they were interested in making sure that people knew that their pediatricians are here in Addison. They're very focused on developmental screenings, so they align real well. Uh, the services that they provide for families and children align real well with what we're focused on in the collaborative. So it's a very natural fit for Hamdart. Well, Nedra services much more than Addison. Um, they make their home here. Anyone who's been by Centennial Park or Club Fitness, I'm sure, has seen your facility. I'm here with Nora and Jamie here to tell us about uh, Nedra and their partnership with the collaborative. Um, Nora, tell us a little bit about how Nedra works with the Early Childhood Collaborative. Well, I think Jamie can answer that one because I I do the registrar part of it. Okay. So she will know how. Okay, Jamie, how do you work with the collaborative? Um, we help support them. Um, we offer some of our ideas with them. I know we work with the library sometimes. It's just a great opportunity to connect with the schools. Obviously, Addison is one of our member districts, but also within the other school districts as well. And Nora, um, tell me a little bit about some of the programs that Nedra 
offers to, to community members and, and things that people can register for right now? Well, we have um, the Special Olympics um, sports. We have pool school for children from ages, um, I believe it's a three to uh, is it tw 12 years old. Mm -hmm. We also have arts and we have um, theater programs for children. We also um, do a lot of service, outreach service for the Hispanic community as well. Jamie, um, since you you come up with you work with the youth on the programs and stuff like that, for those who are unfamiliar, Nedra is very much like a park district, but for those with special yes. needs, correct? Nedra offers uh, programs just like a park district. We offer day camps, youth programs, weekly programs, special events, anything similar to a park district. Ours just have lower participant numbers and higher staff ratios to help our participants with their needs and stuff, so we can cater to them best. Summer day camp, we do break it down into. I have multi need camps and then I also have camps that are specific for autism. Um, that's their only diagnosis, and they're able to be in there. It's more focused on that, and then just the, react the interaction with the staff, they know how to better handle that. We know where you're located. You're right there by Centennial Park, but if someone wanted more information, Nora, how would they find out? Well, they can call me because I'm in the front desk. Nora Sandoval, they can call at 630-576-4010, and I can give them any information they'd like. Great. Thank you both. We are at the Access Community Health Network booth with Ramon. Uh, Ramon, tell us a little bit about uh, the services that you provide, and you have a wealth of information here for everyone here. Tell us about what you're doing tonight. Yes. Uh, basically, we are an organization that ha it is a network of 36 community health centers. Most of those happen to be in the city, uh, south, north, west, but three of those happen to be in, in DuPage. And that's the reason why we collaborate with uh, Addison Early Childhood Collaborative, because for us it's a great opportunity to get to families mm -hmm. and spread the word. Mm -hmm. You know, every organization here, we have something to offer. Mm -hmm. And by working together, it seems to me like we are in a better position to better serve this uh, Addison. Um, is, are these services for low-income families or anyone? What, what types of uh, services? It's actually for anyone because as an organization, we take most insurances, public aid, Medicare, but we also take care of the uninsured. For the uninsured, we usually apply for access to page, and whoever does not qualify for access to page, we offer a sliding scale discount program for the uninsured. That's wonderful. What are some of the, the closest locations? You mentioned there are three here in DuPage? Yes, yes. we have one right here in Addison. It's right here down the street on, on uh, Lake Street. Yes, and uh, we actually co-locate with the uh, DuPage Health Department. Oh, okay. It's 111 Lake Street in, in Addison. The other two, one, then there's another one in uh, Bloomingdale mm -hmm. and West Chicago. Those are the three locations that we have in, in DuPage. That's great. Um, Mary, I would assume that this is something that when you're dealing with a family, possibly new to the community, that kind of thing, that's got to be one of the first questions that you may get. It is, and it's something that families need to get comfortable with very quickly. And Ramon is great. He personally is a fantastic partner, is very active with the group. So he always keeps us advised about what they're doing and what's new, and is always real up to speed in terms of what we are trying to promote in terms of developmental screenings and all of the things that kids need so that he can go back and be talking to the docs at Access. We're here now with Trish at Metropolitan Family Services. Uh, Trish, you are one of the core partners with the collaborative. Tell us about what you do. I am the site supervisor for the Addison Children's Center here in Addison. We're in the Fullerton parking lot. We serve children birth through age three in our early Head Start program, and then they transition over to our Head Start program, which is currently over here at Army Trail School. Um, the, the Early Childhood Center is what they just built over at the old Ardmore School, is that correct? It's at the Fullerton parking lot. Oh, Fullerton. It right. was the administrative building uh -huh. back a couple years ago. We've been open. It was one year this past May. Yeah, and that is an amazing facility. How many kids uh, attend school there? Currently, we have 16 enrolled. We have the capacity for two more classrooms. We're just waiting on some additional funding to come through, and then we will open those classrooms up as well. Um, a lot of people still don't really understand how important it is to get kids at that early age. You know, I mean, like when mine were little, preschool was sort of, well, you know, if mom works or needs a break. But 
but this isn't daycare, it's preschool. It's preschool, and we have the children, they start at six weeks and go up to three years of age, so it's laying that foundation, setting them up for good success for, further down the road in the future, and helping support the families realize the importance of education, and supporting them to support their children as they grow and change. Uh, Mary, you mentioned that um, they are one of the core partners when the collaborative got going. Um, Tell me, tell me a bit about, about the collaborative's relationship with Metropolitan Family and the, and the Addison Center. Sure, Metropolitan Family Services and the Addison School District actually partnered to create the Addison Children's Center. So as Trish said, they're located in the Fullerton Elementary parking lot. And I was glad that you asked the question, Dory, about the Addison Early Learning Center because these are actually two different locations and two different facilities. So the Addison School District's Early Learning Center that is at Ardmore um, provides preschool services for children that are aged three to five. And at Trisha's site, the Addison Children's Center, as she said, um, children there are ranging in age from birth to three. So it's really great because between the different locations, the collaborative can service kids from birth to age five. And do you help screen? I mean, obviously that can't house every child in the district of those ages. How is, how is that screening process and, and what happens there? The way that we screen is Trish and her staff, along with the staff at the Addison Early Learning Center, do screenings on a regular basis. So we've changed the way that we work on screening so that they're integrated so families can bring their children to one location whether they're a little newborn or whether it's an older child that's age you know, two or three. So we've got the screenings being held together in one location to make it more convenient for parents. And we do this about seven times a year. And that information is on the Addison School District 4 website. Trish, how do you typically get in touch with these families? How do they know that these services are even available? A lot of it's through word of mouth, uh, former families sharing information with uh, relatives, cousins, aunts, uncles. Um, we have a great uh, group of family support workers who do a lot of recruitment events in Addison. So they're out sharing information at local restaurants, businesses. We come to events like this, um, partnering with the library. The library is in our building at least once a month reading to the children, having the fire department in, providing other services. So it's a lot of recruitment, a lot of feet on the ground, but it seems to work and we've been very successful. So if someone um, is in need of your services or knows someone who might be, how would they get in touch with you? They can call our intake number, and I'm going to get it so I don't screw it up. They can call 630-784-4801 and then start the process from there. They'll tell them what information they need to bring and set them up with a family support worker or get them set up to come to an intake event. Thank you, Trish. You're welcome. Thank you. We are at the Henry Hyde Resource Center booth with Angie and Concha. and and. Obviously, everybody knows about the Henry Hyde Center. They're part of the village. They're part of the village of Addison. But Angie, for those who might not be completely in the loop, tell us about where you're located and what kind of programs you offer. Okay, we are at 199 Michael Lane. We're just behind Jewel. And we've been there, been there since September of 2007. It's 10 years wow. this month. And yeah. what kinds of programs do you offer? We offer a uh, children's program, and she's in charge of it. Uh -huh. So she can tell you a little bit about it, and then I'll go into the uh, adult program. Okay, well, that, that's a good place to start, because I know that a lot of kids yes. go to the resource center, especially after school. Tell us about what you do there. During the school year, we have an after-school program, and we do homework. We have volunteers from COD that come and help us with homework, with programming. Um, we do art. We do computer fun, um, movies. Um, we just do a variety of stuff. And during the school year, we also have had quite a few field trips. Oh, well, so hopefully great. we'll do that again. And then in the summer, we run a summer camp. Wow. And that's why we are so dark. <laughs> We literally were outside all summer. Oh, I mean, that's great. The weather was great this summer. It was summer. beautiful. We went everywhere this summer, and the kids love it. They talk about it. They come back every year because of our field trips. Yeah. How many um, kids can you accommodate at Henry Hyde? Well, we kind of went over this summer. We had uh, close to 70. Wow. And we usually take 50. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Now, do the kids typically come every day during a week, yes. or do they during, pick and choose? During the week, they, they should come every day, but some of them start joining art clubs, science club, um, and then at the junior high, they have band, they have chorus, they have soccer club. So they give us the schedule, and their parents call in and tell us what dates they're going to be missing, and then we know not to expect them on certain days. Okay. And what about the after-school program? How many kids typically come in for homework help and that kind of thing? Well, right now we're probably up to 30 kids. Mm -hmm. And once again, the same thing, you know, it depends on the day of the week and what programs, what things they sign up for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they all run in and they get their homework out and they start doing it. They know that that's what they're there for and mm -hmm. we sit down with them and we start doing it. And we also give them food from Northern Illinois Food Bank. That's great. Yeah. And you're so right they, there by the switchboard yes, as well. Yes, right. We're by the switchboard. So they love it. They love the food. They get choices, options, and mm -hmm. yeah, they get a little snack before they run home. That's great. And Angie, where the kids go, the parents follow. So tell me about some of the things that you're able to do for the adults. Okay, we have an ESL, or well, they call it E-E-L-A, they changed the name. Okay. Um, COD provide those classes, so it's uh, GED, we have it. And we also have the literacy program. That program is specially for, for adults who speak Spanish that never learn how to read and write in their own language. Mm -hmm. So we have those in our program and it's been really good. Yeah, that's been really great. Good. Yes. Now how is Henry Hyde funded? Through the village. Uh -huh. And do and you also seek donations? I mean, Concha was talking about you get food donated from uh, Northern Illinois yes. Food Bank. That's one of them, and yes, we are always open. But most of the time is through the village and donations of the community. That's great. Mary, you, you mentioned to me before we went on that Henry Hyde is one of your greatest partners, even though they aren't technically a partner. Tell me a little bit about your workings with the Resource Center. Well, they're our expert advisors when I need some good common sense advice about some of the decisions I'm making if I shoot an email over to Angie and Concha and Kiki immediately I get responses it's great to work with people that I know are going to be so helpful and so responsive all the time and they're also great communication partners even though um, they're not like officially on our partner list whenever I ask them to promote work that we're doing they're great about supporting us and it's just a delight to work with everybody over there they're tremendous community partners and they really are part of the neighborhood and the community there everyone trusts them and knows that if the, the information is coming from them yes. then it's accurate absolutely and that's why I mentioned that they're such great um, expert advisors for me and why I rely on them. I can see what trusting relationships they have with families and kids and that's why their perspective means so much to me personally. So it's wonderful that they're so great and helping us whenever I reach out. Very cool. Um, Angie, if someone uh, wants to get more information about the Resource Center, how would they do that? They can either go with us there, we're always there. <laughs> We're always there. That's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> or they can call, it, call us at 630-628-2680. Okay, thank you both. Thank you. thank you. Well, now for some fun stuff. We're here with Sean from Chicago Top Soccer. Uh, Sean, I'll start with the most basic of questions. What is Top Soccer? Top Soccer is the outreach program for soccer, and basically it's an adaptive soccer program for children with special needs. And the great thing about the program is we actually match them up with able-bodied neurotypical teenage kids to volunteer, that volunteer and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. While they learn soccer skills, they also develop socialization skills, they get some physical education out of it. Uh, just so many benefits to both the players and the volunteers. It's an amazing program. How do you find uh, the, the mentors or the volunteers? Uh, I, I, I ask around a lot. Uh, I utilize my soccer co coaching community a lot to reach out and see if they can get their players to actually come out and spend a day with us. If they spend a day with us, they typically come back quite often because it's a ton of fun. And you know we will provide community service hours for them as well. Uh, but generally, they, it's a way for them to give back to a game that's given them so much. And uh, it's a blast. Soccer has been growing for so many years. Uh, I mean, every kid ends up 
at least first time in soccer, it seems. It is a great entry-level sport for most kids to get started in. It's the largest participation sport. Over three million kids in the U.S. play soccer. It's more than any other uh, sport. Um, but uh, it's it's the great thing about soccer in relation to the kids that we work with is it doesn't have a lot of rules that have to be followed. So it's easy to adapt. If we need to put a few more balls out in the field so everybody gets a little more touches, we can put some more goals or more balls or you know we can make the field bigger or smaller. Uh, it allows us a lot of flexibility, which is great. And how, what ages um, do these programs cover? So we start at age five, um, but we have no upper age limit. So you can play top soccer your whole life with us if you choose to. So uh, generally, most of our kids uh, come in about seven or eight years old. Um, and uh, we have kids that are, you know, in high school as well. Um, so we just make sure that we place them by age and ability levels. Mm -hmm. So we, certainly we could have a 15-year-old uh, you know, child that can function very well with a five-year-old, just like we could have a seven-year-old that could function very well with you know, an 18-year-old. Right. So we get to know the kids really well, so we, we place them where they need to be on the field together so that everything is kind of uh, related and you know, fun. And where do where do you play? We play at Addison Trail High School. So they've been wonderful to us. Uh, they let us use their field house for two months in the spring and the fall. And we play once a week on Saturdays from 3 to 4 p.m. That's great. Mary, how did uh, Top Soccer become part of the collaborative? And this sounds like a really fun kind of thing for you to put people in touch with. It's actually a very fun thing. And Sean is not yet part of the collaborative. So the story here is one of our partners, um, probably about a month or so ago, introduced Sean and me. And as soon as I got on their website and saw what they were all about, I was thrilled that somebody tipped me off about what it is they do and introduced me to Sean. So our hope is that um, this will be the start possibly of a partnership. But in the meantime, we've got several parents that are a part of the collaborative group that we communicate with who are interested in finding sports and different activities that their kids can be in. So I'm real delighted to be able to tell them about Chicago Top Soccer and Sean and what they're doing in Addison. Um, what special needs do uh, do you meet in Top Soccer? Is it pretty much anything? or? We really see the whole gambit. Uh, most of our players are uh, on the intellectual disability scale. I would say about 70, 75 percent of them have autism or Down syndrome. Um, but we do have a lot of kids with cerebral palsy. We have several kids in wheelchairs and walkers. Our motto is everyone plays. So if you show up, you're going to be a part of our team. We're going to find a way to make soccer accessible to you no matter how creative we have to get. That's great. Now, if someone uh, knows a child that might benefit from this, how would they go about contacting you, Sean? The best way is to visit our website, chicagotopsoccer.com. Uh, it has all the information there and all my contact information, and I'll, I'll, talk, I'll answer any question they have. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And finally, we are here at the Northeast DuPage Family and Youth Services booth with Samir, here to tell us about what NEDFIS does. So NEDFIS is a community-based social services agency. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization and we serve uh, the residents of DuPage County. Uh, some of our services include counseling, school groups, uh, crisis intervention, um, social uh, emotional learning groups, and then uh, juvenile justice services as well. How do you typically get clients? Is that through the police departments or how? So we have uh, multiple routes, uh, so we do get clients through the police department and also um, referrals through schools and also uh, individual clients as well. And what typically are, are, you, are you helping people with? Is this domestic violence situations, uh, you know, addiction, what, what kinds of services? So our counseling services, uh, they aren't specified. It's, uh, it's individual couples, uh, family therapy. And then we also do a lot of, like I said, uh, school groups. So we teach a lot of the social emotional skills that you know, kids not, might not have transitioning into middle school or high school. So, so the school districts then uh, recommend people to your your program. Yes. So we actually will be starting a school group uh, here in Indian Trail uh, starting in October. So this is not a mandated group. Kids are choosing to be in this uh, in this group. So which is great, and that's what we want. We don't want you know kids to feel that they have to be here. Sure. We want kids to feel that they you know we, they want to be here and learn these skills. 
Exactly. Mary, tell me a little bit about your partnership with NEDFIS. Sure, it's valuable to us, Dory, because we know that there are a lot of families in Addison that aren't aware of the Addison um, Early Childhood Collaborative and all of the services that comprehensively are provided by our partners. So because they're connected with the Addison Police, there are times when a family might be having an issue and there's some kind of crisis going on, and that's really when a family could use the types of services that are a part of the collaborative. And it's also a time when families can be like most confused about how to figure out how to find services and access them and take advantage of the great services that are here. So they're integral in terms of being a great partner with the police station and helping us connect with families when they might be dealing with some tough stuff. Exactly. And, and on that note, how would someone connect with you, Samir? Um, we we have a Facebook group. You can find us on Facebook um, if you just spell out our name, um, Netfest for short. And then um, we also have an online uh, a website, netfest.org, or you can call us as well. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.